Yes, well played Crystal Palace. That's just their second ever win at Selhurst Park in the Premier League era against Manchester United. They've scored four against Manchester United. Manchester United's heaviest defeat of the season, their 13th defeat of the season. The first time that's happened on that number for 35 years and the problems are mounting for that man. And just how bad and how damaging could that be tonight for a United Paul? Uh, I don't know, Steve. Um, just a very upset and, and sad performance tonight, I think. But it felt like there was one team that was being coached and one team that was so easy to play against. It's untrue. Man United hardly created a chance. We saw Manu, who was almost playing left back at times. I, I'm not sure what on God's earth he was asked to do today. See, this is why they, they look like they're going to get beat five or six. That, that could have been that could have been seven no, that against Crystal Palace away, that, that's the most worrying, damaging thing. I'm certainly upset and sad, but quite happy it was only four. That's quite incredible, the support, isn't it? Incredible. You know, how the... Away fans are amazing. Away fans, I yeah. mean, that is incredible. Imagine the embarrassment. Imagine the embarrassment there stood Wait a minute, Michael. That. The manager walked down, the, down to the tunnel. Yeah, well. He's not even been over to that. <laughs> but the other side of the story is, Palace are very much on the up. Playing with freedom, consistency. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, we said it before the game, Steve. I don't think it was a, a surprise. Though. I mean, they've got some fantastic attacking players. They're not conceding. Go, obviously, keeping a clean sheet against Manchester United. The fans are on board. The new manager's playing with a different style. It's all looking really, really good for Crystal Palace. And there's no surprise. I mean, I think, I think you heard me and Paul both say that fancy Palace today to, to beat Manchester United. And... Palace went into this game as favourites. I couldn't believe my eyes when I when I when I saw that. Got to give all the credit for Crystal Palace, but you can't disguise the fact that, that those players trudging off there are just a pale shadow of what they should be. Interesting conversation there between the three of them, wasn't it? I'm not supposed to see them talk all through the game. Yeah. Leaving it covering hands covering the mouth. Do me a favour, will you? I mean. I've said it for a long time, you know, I've sat here for mm. quite a while, I've been saying that Ten Hag is just not the right man for this job. I've been saying it for ages and ages. I just want, I mean, he cannot, simply cannot manage the team next season. But I almost wonder now, they've got a cup final and they've got a few important games that could mean European football next year or not. And at some point you've got to make a decision, right, well, there's nothing... They're going to get absolutely hammered by Manchester City. They're going to get annihilated. In fact, Arsenal will smash them to bits at Old Trafford. Newcastle will probably beat them. And I wouldn't even fancy them going to Brighton either. They might not get anything out the rest of the season if they're playing like that. And I just wonder, with so much at stake, even though it's only for four games, I wonder whether the board might just have to try to do something here and now and be quite radical about it. I'm not sure... But he cannot, simply cannot, manage this team next season. He's not good enough. I've thought it for ages. He's just not good enough to manage Manchester United. And would a performance in the way they've lost tonight like that just add even more fuel to people's opinions, like Michael, to that fire? Yeah, look, look it's, it's been a difficult, difficult one, I suppose, I know Michael said he, he's, he's felt it for a long time and the signs have been there that it's going to be difficult for him to do it next year. But that, that tonight almost felt like a final nail in the coffin, really. Um, you know, there's there's a, a lack of know-how from the team, a lack of effort, which is the big disappointing thing. Going to a, a team like Crystal Palace, look, don't get me wrong, they're a good team, they're doing well, but whatever situation Manchester United, they should be not going there and losing 4-0, it just felt, it felt like the end. Now, if it is the end, I'm not sure, because what did it do? You know, what, what, what's out there at the minute? I've always felt for a while that he might get another year and work for a club that is steadied down, calmed down a little bit by the new owners. But it just doesn't feel like it now, because I, I felt, who, who's there to replace him? Who is out there? There, there wasn't really anybody... Now, with Thomas Tuchel saying he's, he, he's leaving Bayern Munich, I think that doesn't create a bigger problem for him because I think the problems are there anyway. I think it's quite plain to see that it feels like borrowed time and, and watching that performance tonight, 
sometimes you get them performance where you think this is, this is the end, and, and that almost felt like it. I remember Ollie Gunner at Watford away. I think it did, did it have a similar look to it tonight. It, it felt it felt very similar to me. It just it just fell at the end. But what do you do for the last four games, Michael? So you got a big cup final. You, you can't see. You can't see where a win's coming from. You look at the last three fixtures, even before tonight, look at the game, you can't see where a win. They've won one in seven. And I, that was against Sheffield United, the team that have yeah. been, been relegated. They can't beat Burnley at home. Got to try something different. What, 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 I mean, what, 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 I, anything, anything. Steve McLaren? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, We've I, played under Steve McLaren. Yes. We, he's coached us. There is no way, and we had a discussion before, there is no way that his fingerprints are anywhere near that team. Say. He is a brilliant, brilliant coach, and that team Suggested is not you. being not coached at coaching. all. No way, no way. That, that no way Steve me, McLaren is, he, he, is the first team coach. Yeah, he, he's not touching that team. I, I don't think he's the manager must not be letting him touch that team because they were t- everyone thinks we were a great team that attacked everybody and went at people. Sometimes we played against better teams. Steve McLaren put sessions on to make sure you stopped other teams. Getting the distances right, getting your angles right, especially in the centre midfield, all across the midfield. And he has got no impression on that team. Whatsoever. He's as good a coach as, uh, as, well, as I've best. played under. He's the best coach I ever had. He's a brilliant, brilliant coach. There is no way on earth, Steve, I'm telling you, that he's got anything to do with coaching that team. No. It's impossible. Because that team is absolutely clueless right the way through it. Right the way through, there's not one thing that I think that works in that team. I don't rate anything about it, anything. And, and Steve McLaren is a top operator. And I can only think he's there, you know, you know there's other people coaching the first team and he's just a bystander. So, so you'd be quite happy if Ten Hag went for, for the last four games, including the cup final, Steve McLaren lead the team? For four games, yeah. And, well, anything, there's, they're going to get smashed out the ballpark by every team they play playing like that today. Manchester City are going to demoralise them at Wembley in front of millions of people. It's embarrassing. That's just embarrassing how they're playing. The, the, Something's not, got to change. I know it's going to change in the summer, but it's got to change. It's, I think it's got to change now. There's too many big games. This could, you know, this is European football next year. This is a trophy at the end of the year. There's not actually that many bad players there, is there? No. Do you know what I mean? Not, it, not, it looks shape like that team they're not, not being better. cultured when it comes to the, the, being the manager's fault. We, we had times when... I remember Michael Carrick and Darren Fletcher playing centre-half at times for us. Three or four times, you lose centre-half. So what? It gives you the bigger challenge, you know what I mean? Say, go on, right, come on, we're, we're more determined, but they just know. It looks like the fight's gone out of them. OK, much to discuss, as you can see. Strong words. A very beating Manchester United at 4-0 at home is a huge, huge statement. What does it say about the future of this team under Oliver Glasner? Yeah, I think there's a lot. That's a big statement. But, again, we're not surprised. We know what we're capable of. We know what we can do. Um, the quality that we've got in the, in the dressing room is is high. So, yeah, we don't see that as a surprise. We know what we came here to do today, and it worked. Michael, two goals for you tonight. Could it have been the hat-trick? Yeah, yeah, it could have. Could have been <laughs> Should it have been a hat-trick? Probably, probably. <laughs> and Aberry, 4-0 was the final scoreline, but... Were you better value for the, just that scoreline? Could there have been more goals tonight from Palace? Yeah, I think so. I've missed a few chances today. Um, probably not as clinical as I should have been, but again, you can see we're creating chances. We're not worried about what's going on behind us. We're, we're attacking, we're, we're aggressive, and we're going to continue to create chances for sure. And Michael, off this performance, two ge- games left. How important is it you continue this form, finish strongly looking ahead? Yeah, of course we don't want to drop off now. We want to continue to the end of the season. Keep putting in good performances and see where that leaves us. Now. Well, listen, a very well done to both of you, but a great well done to you. You are the player of the match. I think somehow you can split that in half maybe in the dressing room, but well done. You got a two goals today, man. There you go, brother. Thank you, Bubba. Love, man. Thank you. Boys, love it. Yeah, another excellent night for those two. Let's speak live to one of their teammates, Chris Richards, who's waiting to talk to us as well. 4 0 at home to Manchester United. It doesn't get much better than that, Chris. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's always good winning at home, especially having a shutout. And uh, yeah, 4 0, it doesn't really get much better. I mean, this is a club and a team on the up. What, just give us a, a sense of what Oliver Glasner has done since he came in. Yeah, he just uh, he kind of changed our philosophy, you know. I think the first half of the season we were. Um, 
I think we were standing off a bit too much, and he came in and said that we need to go at every team. We need to be aggressive, be on the front foot, and uh, I think you know I think it's paid off. We've had a lot of good results since uh, since he's come in, and um, we're really looking forward to the rest of the season, the beginning of next season. And to do that against Manchester United, and as your teammates were saying there, it could have easily been more than the four tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I think it's, like I said, it's always nice to score four, but uh, I think we could have gotten a bit more. Um, but that just shows the potential that we have um, to play against whatever team in the league. Chris, you, uh, you kept a really, well, a top team in Manchester United, very quiet today. All those top strikers that you played, were you surprised that they didn't cause you any more problems or was it purely down to your good play? Uh, I think it was down to our play. Um, you know, of course, we know the quality that United have, and uh, we just tried our best to eliminate that and just let the people up front do what they needed to do to score. So we knew that if we could keep their forwards and their, their attack uh, quiet, that you know, we'd get a good result. And you mentioned your forwards. Uh, how good is it to be playing behind those three at the moment? <laughs> Uh, it's a great feeling, you know, uh, just give the ball to them and let them do whatever they need to do. Um, I think I got an assist today, which I don't know if that's what you call it, but uh, just get the ball to them and let them dribble and uh, hopefully put a few in the back of the net. And, and just finally, I mean, that is, uh, you know, a terrific return, 18 points from 33 under the new manager. Now a couple more games to play. Things really looking good for the immediate future. Yeah, definitely. You know, we want to finish uh, the season on a high note and, uh, you know, hopefully just um, bring that mentality, bring that momentum into the next season and, uh, you know, hopefully have a good season next next year. Well played, Chris, tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, he's made some difference as well, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, a clean sheet against Manchester United. Never easy, even though this is a, an off-colour uh, Manchester United at the moment. Um, still, it's, uh, it's something to, to, uh, to be very proud of. Uh, and they hardly looked like scoring, did they? They marshaled them really well. And and when you when you're going forward, when you're playing well going forward as well, um, that takes a lot of the pressure off your defence. You know, you they can keep the ball, they dribble, they you know do all things in the in the final third, and all of a sudden it makes the night a little bit more comfortable for you. So every different area of the pitch is working for Palace at the moment. Suffice to say, though, Manchester United helped them with the way they conceded those goals tonight. Yeah, they did, and I think Mike, Michael made a good point there. Manchester didn't really look like scoring tonight. I'm trying to think of chances. They had a couple of headers from Casemiro, but that was about it. But again, this was all about positional play. We, we did that. Did this at half-time. Eriksen, too far out of the pitch. Mainu, not having enough desire. And then when Eriksen makes that mistake, Casemiro, I reckon that could have happened four or five times. So Casemiro sits down and somebody skips past him. And look, the, the lad's not a centre half, and it, it's tough to have a bit of a pop who's done so much for the game. He's a you know, fantastic footballer. It's, it's difficult watching a few of these actually because you do feel they're coming towards the end. They shouldn't really be at a club of this stature now, really. Uh, I think the next few years going forward, they'll be somewhere else. United look leggy. They looked like an oldish team. There wasn't really much legs about them. There wasn't really much positional sense about them tonight, which again was worrying. As I said, the two midfield players for, for Crystal Palace, they hardly moved. I, I, I can't think of them being in, our, being in our, the opposition box. And, and you, you saw United. So Ericsson's up here. Mainu's down here. Mason, I'm, I'm not quite sure where Mason Mount was playing. And again, it's difficult to be critical of Mason Mount because he, he's just not played any football. I think that comes down to coaching. You saw United could not really, in open play, they couldn't create chances. They've got a centre forward there, Man United. It makes your blood boil that centre forward forwards, man. They're not even getting chances. Rasmus Hoyland, I've watched him the last seven or eight games. I know he scored one goal. He doesn't get a chance in a game. I asked Michael before, do you think if you played in this team, do you think you'd get chances? The answer was no. I, I think he would. Because there's still quality. You think of Christian Eriksson. What a player. Mainly we know he's a good footballer. These players, but... Scalzi, the manager about a week ago said they're the most dynamic team in, 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 in the UK or something. He came out with a quote about a week ago saying, you know, we're, we're great to watch. We're a dynamic team and, and all the rest of it after the game against Burnley. I mean, I don't know what, I, what game I'm watching. They, they suck the life out of, of you. As if, if, you're, if you're a Manchester United fan watching this, there's nothing that you can cling on to, is there? There's nothing. There's, there's not a player. There's, not a, there's no sparks. There's no chinks of light where you think, ah, yeah, OK, well, 
you know, I'll, I'll be a bit more, you know, a bit more perseverance, a little bit more patient, and I, I can see something happening here. It just feels like it's getting worse and worse and worse, and eventually you just can't take any more. I'm sure you can't if you're a Manchester United fan. I, I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure the meaning of dynamic is, is, is what it means. I, I, I think when you watch that, I presume for a neutral watching, it can be quite entertaining because they do create a lot of chances, or what they haven't tonight, but in games they have created a lot of chances. The big problem is they look like they could concede five or six in every single game, and five or six is being quite nice. It, it could be a lot more. They're conceding so many chances. It's so easy to play against. And look, uh, where, where, where do you go from there? We keep saying about... There's probably six players who are missing who would be playing. But still, that team that is out there tonight, that performance, as we all know, it's lucky. It's un- unacceptable. It, it's sad. It's, it is disapp- it's disappointing to watch. But what do you expect from... A lot of players who are they're coming to the end. Again, Casemiro. Casemiro, yeah. he's... A, he, He's at fault for virtually every goal, isn't he? That last one he was at fault for. That one he's at fault for. The, the goalkeeper first one well, he's Michael. at fault for. The goalkeeper. The, the ball goes in the middle of the goal virtually here. It's incredible. I, 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 I just don't know where yeah. there's any positives. So, so where? I, I don't know what you put that, that down to when you've got a man with such experience won what he's won in the game. and This is the best what, what angle. This see? virtually goes in the middle of the goal. I mean, the goalkeeper doesn't even get any, anywhere near it. I just, I'm just failing to see any positives at all about, about this at the, at the moment. Well, let's see if Eric Ten Hag's got any, because here is the post-match reaction of the Manchester United manager. Eric, not for the first time, Manchester United this season have been on the end of a disappointing result. But how disappointing a performance was that for you tonight from your team? Oh, it's clear and it's obvious. Um, this is underperforming. And uh, um, we didn't... Um, act how we want to do it and it's by far not good enough so yeah we are very disappointed by this and uh, the fans were all the way uh, behind us and we should have keep fighting like the fans did it's not the first time either you've had to stand in front of me or some of my other colleagues and answer these questions but what do you put it down to when you say your team is not good enough? Is that the players not adapting to what you're asking for them? Is it a lack of belief from them? How do you assess it? So there are always reasons. <laughs> Everyone see our back line and there we have huge problems. But yeah, in the end of the day, we have to deal with it. And then we should have done better than as we did. Looking at the first goal that you conceded tonight, your two central midfielders are ahead of the ball is that a position that you're asking them to take up or is that something that they're doing of their own initiative? Uh, there were five players and uh, such a goal that shouldn't happen. And because we really give clear instructions how we should defend this and uh, they just they didn't bring it on the pitch and we got hammered. And, but uh, there was one issue, but also on the left side, uh, there were two players doubling up on one, uh, on one player. And so that's very poor defending. I think it would be wrong to single out individual players. You're clearly making it clear that it's a team responsibility. But when you look at a player of the stature of Casemiro and you see at this moment how he appears to be struggling, what do you put that down to? As you say, you can't put this to one player. eh? It's a team performance. As you say, uh, the throw-in and uh, when you concede the first goal, that that shouldn't happen. And that's, that's his team. Hey, because we don't follow their rules, we don't adapt to a slightly different situation uh, to organise, to keep control in that situation. Five players over the ball and they have a throw in, it's not possible. We spoke before the game about your ambitions of Europe and how that is so important to this club. How damaging has tonight's result been? Yeah, we know that, especially when you come to the end. But still, we have nine points to play and we have to fight for the nine points. You'll be aware better than anybody, you're very experienced. This result will make headlines all around the world for the wrong reasons from your perspective. Do you still believe that you can turn this team around, given whatever help you can get, given a performance like that tonight? Oh, 
we, I will keep fighting. And I prepared the team in the best way I, I could do. Uh, it was not good enough, by far not good enough. I have to take the responsibility for that. But uh, I will find energy and I will prepare them for Sunday game. Well, he's going to need some energy. He said they're underperforming. Uh, these figures from the season more than emphasise that, Paul. I mean, it's quite damning, really, for Manchester United. Um, record low points, record high defeats, record high goals conceded, and as you mentioned earlier, record high shots faced. That sums it up, Steve. Um, well, you know, what, can you say? What, what can you say to it? The, what, the one thing I took from the interview was... They, it's, players aren't carrying out the instruction he's, he's given to them. So there, there has to be a big problem there straight away. Look, 13 defeats in one season for Man United. It's 35 years since that happened. Yeah, it's, um, it's why, they are, why they are in the league. It's just not it's far, far from good enough. Um, so easy to play against. I think that's the biggest worry. Difficult night for Paul to watch his former club, but we appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much indeed. Another frustrating night for Eric Ten Hag. A very successful one for Crystal Palace, but for United, the problems are mounting from the three of us. We'll see you soon.